Hey guys, it's Bird Curbers, and welcome to the final prime review of 2015. Hmm. Where I'll be looking over the your results of the matches from M Monday, Tuesday's match, and last night's each match, which I'll get to in a minute. Let's start off with the uh, the Monday games. Uh, nil nil between Crystal Palace and Swansea. Two dropped points for Crystal Palace. Way. <laughs> we go from uh, a game that had no goals to a game that had the most of the all the games of the past couple of days, and that was Everton and Stoke. Three. He, he, Everton 3, Stoke 4. What a game that was. I was watching the highlights. I was like, what the fuck just happened? And it went in the last minute. It has got to be a real piss take. Hey, if you're Everton. Real. He disappointing if you're Everton. I would have liked to draw, so I was a bit pissed off as well. So there you go. Norwich being Aston Villa two nil, and uh, by the way, um, just a little hint for Remy Guard. Keep your mouth shut. What an idiot! Why did he say who he was targeting? What? A fucking moron. Has this guy never managed in a transfer window before? You never say who you're going after. Her. Her. Now, I, you will probably have to pay at least double what you would have if you had kept your mouth shut. Why? Why? You never say who you're after because it's... Because either one of your rivals will go in for him as well. Or, the team that owns him are like, why would we want to sell him to you? Now we know you want him and before her hand, and we can put any price we want on him. That's like, any starting manager or should be told that on day one. In, in, in like, class. It's, it's, okay, first lesson. In, during it, when the window is coming up, Never announce who your targets are. Or, or here's a newsflash, you're either going to have to pay way too much for them, or you're not going to fucking get them because one of your rivals was higher in the table than you who want to keep you who, below them. Um, and s if they see this player as someone who will, will improve your squad to the point where they might, where they might get above them, um, they will go out and sign that guy instead. So, yeah, bad move there by Remy Guard. A 2 0 loss to Norwich doesn't exactly fill him with confidence. But still, there's no excuse for naming your target beforehand. That's like. That is like the last thing you're supposed to do. That You never do that. You never do that. And he will quite rightly not get that player now. And you all obviously know I'm talking about uh, Lorik Remy. What's to stop Newcastle or Sunderland go like, let's go in for him? And if Aston Villa are going in for him, maybe he can improve our team. We're above them. We might have a better chance of signing him. Hmm. And especially if they keep that quiet. Like, oh my god, I still can't believe he did that. What a fucking moron. Anyway, uh, Watford, 2-1 loss to Spurs. Drop in three points. Fantastic. Spurs gaining the three points. As a Liverpool fan, I'm like, we'll worry about Spurs when we're closer to them. Let's get above the teams we have to get above to get actually near Spurs, and then we'll worry about Spurs. Spurs. Uh, one nil loss for Newcastle against West Brom. 
And uh, you guys, if you guys know True Jordy, he's pretty much accepting relegation at this point, which is uh, a bad sign if you're a Newcastle. <laughs> oh, that one of your uh, most passionate it fans is pretty much saying, "Yeah, well, we're fucked." <laughs> so uh, that doesn't that shouldn't fill Newcastle with any particular amount of um, of um, what's the word? Um, sport. Oh, confidence. <laughs> no idea what the why the word uh, escaped me there. But yeah, that doesn't sound particularly good if one of your most passionate fans is like, "Well, well, we're fucked." So yeah, Arsenal two 0 win over Bournemouth. Very well done, Arsenal bouncing back from that 4 0 loss to Southampton. Very well. Going to the top of the table. And, through pure sheer luck, they stayed there. So, uh, go on, Arsenal. Why not? As long as City don't win the league, he can sense Liverpool who aren't going to win it. Arsenal, feel free. Have your fun. And Arsenal fans must have thought they'd gone and seen all when they heard that Wenger is actually going to spend money on an outf on outfield players in the January transfer window. And I was like, wait, are we sure this is Arsenal Wenger? I'm pretty sure this guy's an imposter. Arsenal Wenger never spends money. But yeah, he's actually going for an outfield player. Which will make a nice change from the summer window, especially if you're an Arsenal fan. And especially when you're like, this could be our year. <laughs> so there you go. Arsenal fans, every reason to celebrate. He's your top of the table, and you're going to be signing a new players. <laughs> And uh, we go from a team that has every reason to celebrate to two teams that have absolutely no reason to celebrate. Chelsea and Man United. And you already know the scoreline because it's including Man United. So I could have told you who, who beforehand that this match would end up nil-nil. And of course it did because Man United. To be fair, I'm happy that they dro they're dropping points. They're fucking they're getting a lot closer to Liverpool. <laughs> and if they keep dropping points, we'll fucking pass them. And we won't look back until we drop some points, which <laughs> is bound to happen. <laughs> Especially with, with our form. So yeah. So yeah, no no. Nothing can really be said about that match. Let's move on. West Ham 2 1 winners over Southampton. Very good, especially when you consider that they were 1 0 down at one point. And so, uh, nice bounce back ability from West Ham. Their er, run of draws ends with a nice win. Southampton didn't really, uh, Pile on from that uh, victory over Arsenal. Bump in the road, or is this going to be how Southampton's season goes? They only get wins here and there. Because they're not going to get anywhere near where they want to be if that's the case. We uh, come now to the Third nil nil draw of the past three days. Leicester and Manchester City. And I was I was actually shocked that there was no goals in this. I was hoping for a draw, but I was like probably two two. But no, it's nil nil. Which is especially surprising considering City's weakest point is their defence. So <laughs> and uh no no goal again. For Jamie Vardy, he. 
Yeah. Doesn't seem so good now, does he? You could argue it's just two games. Two games can turn into five games, can turn into ten games. Is this the start of Leicester's decline, or are they going to uh, get back to their best in the new year? We shall see. And finally, Liverpool's 1-0 win at Stadium of Light over Sunland. Let me just ask one question. Christian Benteke. What the fuck is wrong with you? For the second game in a row, you missed an easy opportunity to get a second goal and to kill the game off. This is the exact same thing you did against Leicester. You pretty much handed it to the opposition by he's saying, nah, I'm not going to score this. It's I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake, Christian, for fuck's sake. We paid so much money for you, for a player that does not fit our style. Oh, and when you have the opportunity to get some goals, and prove us wrong, and prove why you should be in a Liverpool shirt, you fuck up. Yeah, you did get the winners against Leicester and Sunderland, but you should have gotten to it against both, both and yet didn't. And, and arguably, the second chances were, be were easier than the first ones on both occasions, and you missed the second ones on both occasions. Yeah, we got the three points. Yeah, you got the winner. Does it matter? Fuck no. You're still not good enough. Of, you're still going to need, need a lot more goals before or we're like, we were wrong. And I'm never going to admit I was wrong unless I have to. So yeah, Christian Mantegge, start scoring more goals. Thankfully, when the window is open, we'll sign a new striker. And that will give Christian Mantegge the fucking kick that he needs to be like, right, I can't lays around because this guy is much better than me he, he and he actually fits the style oh because Klopp isn't as stupid as Brendan Rodgers so yeah but heck a shape up or you'll be out the fucking door so that's been the prime review of 20 of the last games of 2015 I will see you all in 2016 for another Prime Review. Until oh, then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Eat, eat. And I'll see you all next time. Peace.